Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless being transgender is at odds with science and god's design as we read in genesis 126 and 27 then god said let us make man in our image according to our likeness let them have dominion over the fish of the sea over the birds of the air and over the cattle over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth so God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Somehow, in some mysterious and wonderful way, the human male and female, in both body and spirit, are the image and likeness of God. Satan hates mankind because we are created in God's image. He is sowing confusion in the minds of our children. And he is busy in these last days devouring those who are not steadfast in the faith, as we read in 1 Peter 5, 8-11. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him, steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. But may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. To him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. In your head, you always imagine the revolution, when it starts, will start with tanks and gunfire, with chaos and soldiers in the street. You'll know when it comes, but it never does. Instead, the really big changes to American life, the profound ones that affect all of us forever, those changes almost always begin quietly with gentle pleas for tolerance. We'd like to do things a little differently, they tell you. We'd like to make a change to some customer belief that people have been attached to for the last few thousand years. But don't be alarmed. It's not a big deal. You don't even need to participate. All we ask is that you let us live the way we want to live. That's always the pitch. And of course, you always agree to it. Why wouldn't you? Who could say no to that? Some guy down the street wants to wear a dress? Okay, fine. Have a party. It doesn't affect you. You don't have to wear a dress. So go ahead. Live and let live. But it turns out that's never actually the deal. The guy down the street wears his dress, but after a while, that's not enough for him. He's still angry. And for some reason, he's angry with you. And that doesn't make sense because you're the person who had no problem with him wearing a dress in the first place. What did you do wrong? Problem is, you're not wearing a dress and neither are your kids. Your normal person clothes, the ones you've always worn, are suddenly immoral. You've got to change immediately. Whoa, wait a second, you say. That's not what we agreed to. You do your thing and I'll do mine. Remember? They don't remember. They don't care. That's not how it works. You don't get to do your thing anymore. The dress guy's in charge now. Everybody's got to do his thing, the dress thing, or face punishment. That's how it goes. Deuteronomy 22.5 A woman shall not wear anything that pertains to a man, nor shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all who do so are an abomination to the Lord your God. Be tolerant becomes show some respect, which evolves very quickly into bow down before us and lick our feet or else we'll hurt you. That's the final stage. That's where we are now. For example, a Democratic lawmaker in Virginia called Elizabeth Guzman is introducing a bill that will charge parents with a felony, strip them of their employment, and imprison them if they don't wholeheartedly endorse their minor children's sex changes. So your 12-year-old daughter says she wants a mastectomy. If you object to that in any way, if you raise questions, Elizabeth Guzman will send you to jail. For real. Here's a local news report. Her bill would expand the state's definition of child abuse and neglect to include parents 
who do not affirm their child's gender identity or sexual orientation. There is an investigation also in place that is not only, you know, from a social worker, but there is also a police investigation before we make the decision that there is going to be a CPS charge. What could the penalties be if, you know, the investigation concludes and it's concluded that a parent is not affirming of their LGBTQ child, what could the consequences be? Well, we first have to have an investigation. You know, it could be a felony, it could be a misdemeanor, but we know that CP a CPS charge could harm, you know, your employment, could harm your education. So who is this Elizabeth Guzman? Well, Elizabeth Guzman came to this country not so long ago from Peru as a single mother. Now, rather than wait a while, maybe spend a few generations here before telling you how to raise your children in America, she's decided to get right to it and completely change child rearing in this country in a way that would never be tolerated for a second in the country from which she comes. In this country, according to Elizabeth Guzman, you have to affirm your child's sex change or else you're going to prison and the state will raise your kids. Now you gotta think, maybe they've wanted this for a while. What would this mean? Well, it would mean fewer intact families. It would mean people like Elizabeth Guzman make the decisions, the meaningful decisions within your house. It means less resistance from you. It means more powerful them. What it doesn't mean is that Elizabeth Guzman will be protecting your kids. She doesn't even claim this law will protect your kids. Instead, she acknowledges the whole point is to, quote, educate parents. Right. So like the COVID vaccine, this is a pretty easy way to figure out who's on which side. Are you for this? OK, you're on our team. You're willing to surrender control of your own children to Elizabeth Guzman, who, again, just got here. But if you're not for it, then we know you're not on our team. We know who you are. We can silence you. We can punish you because you refuse to be educated. So it's a signaling mechanism. And you know that because the ideology that underlies it, gender ideology, is completely incoherent. It doesn't make any sense at all. It is not rooted in science. It's a form of religion that's so crazy, it dares you to say something about it. What? You can't even say that. If you do, they know you're on the other side. And it's not just lunatics and ideologues like Elizabeth Guzman from Peru. It's doctors. It's medical professionals. Here's a video from Boston Children's Hospital, one of the most famous hospitals in the world, which, like many hospitals in the United States at this point, under the Joe Biden administration, cuts the breasts off of minor girls for no medically justifiable reason. Watch a practicing psychologist, an attending psychologist at Boston Children's Hospital explain how early children can become trans. So most of the patients that we have in the GEMS clinic actually know their gender, usually around the age of puberty, but a good portion of children do know as early as seemingly from the womb, and they will usually express their gender identity as very young children, some as soon as they can talk. They might say phrases such as, I'm a girl, or I'm a boy, or I'm going to be a woman, or I'm going to be a mom. Kids know very, very early. So in the GEMS clinic, we see a variety of young children all the way down to ages two and three, and usually up to the ages of nine. So that's Carrie McGregor. She's a psychologist. She works at Harvard. I wonder how many children does Carrie McGregor have? Has she raised a lot of kids? Has she watched kids carefully? Does she know anything about kids? Because she's telling you if your little kid says, oh, maybe I'm the other sex, that means your kid is the other sex. Well, that's insane because almost 100% of kids at one point or another, at a certain point in development, say things like, I think I'm a boy. I think I'm a girl. And you smile indulgently. Get back to me in 15 years. But no, says Carrie McGregor, in the womb you can know. So think about what they're telling you. They're telling you the developing child in the womb is just a part of the mother. Therefore, you can abort that child at any time. It's like an appendectomy. But at the same time, that same cluster of cells, that fetus, can also be woke and ascribed to left liberal gender ideology. And you need to honor that. So no sane, sane person could believe any of this voluntarily. It doesn't even make sense on its face. Again, it's a religion. And if you resist it, they resort immediately to force. No questions allowed. There is a new religion that is moving like a tidal wave through every facet of Western culture, shaping and redefining society as it goes. This new religion disguises itself 
under the guise of compassion and justice, but underneath it is an evil ideology that is not compatible with Christian values. This new religion is called wokeism. Although it has not been organized into any formal religious structure, it has all the functions of religious doctrine. Wokeism has developed its own view of reality and with its own set of values and narratives. Wokeism falsely claims its own version of truth, justice, righteousness, sin, and judgment. The woke mob is trying to create a future utopian society liberated from what they claim to be an evil and oppressive system. The problem with being woke is, it views the world through what man determines to be moral and not what God says. The Bible tells us our hearts are evil, as we read in Jeremiah 17.9. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? The Bible tells us our ways are not God's ways, as we read in Isaiah 55, 8, and 9. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. The Bible teaches us not to follow after philosophers and deceivers of the world, as we read in Colossians 2, 8. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. As we watch world events unfold, it is as if we are all watching the same movie. Yet at the same time, Christians and unbelievers are seeing two separate stories. Christians are watching world events unfold, just as the Bible said it would, right before Jesus returns. Christians long for Christ's return, as we are looking forward to the day He rules and reigns as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. We look forward to a day when there will be no more lawlessness, a time of peace and harmony with all creation. Unbelievers, on the other hand, are trying to create their own utopian society, where lawlessness runs unchecked and every kind of evil is thought to be good. Christians have been given the Spirit of God as a gift, as we read in 1 Corinthians 2, 12 through 16. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. These things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man, speaking of the unsaved, does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. For who has known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Paul goes on to say this in Galatians 6, 7, Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. The unsaved are doing the desires of their father the devil, as we read in John 8, 44. You are of your father the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it. The reality at the end of these two stories also have different outcomes. The prophet Daniel put it succinctly, And many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, some to shame, and everlasting contempt. Which do you choose, everlasting life or shame and everlasting contempt? It's up to you, eternity with God or eternity in the lake of fire. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Again, this is science. And the essence of science is relentless questioning about what you think you know is true. That is the scientific method, that's science itself. But it's no longer allowed. The American Medical Association, which has utterly beclowned itself, along with the American Academy of Pediatrics and the Children's Hospital Association, just sent a letter to the Attorney General of the United States demanding that the Biden administration, and we're quoting, take swift action to investigate and prosecute high-profile users on social media who have engaged in, quote, disinformation. You hate to always invoke the German government of 80 years ago, but what else is that? That's totalitarian. They're saying if you disagree, with what we're doing, people with guns should come and take you away. Now, you'd think someone in the media would point out, wow, you know, we, we can't have that in the United States where people are free 
to believe what they want and to talk about it in public and to ask questions. In fact, they should be encouraged to. But the media don't say anything like that. They're joining with the Children's Hospital Association, the AMA, to call for more censorship at gunpoint. Watch. Obviously, the question becomes then, when misinformation, disinformation is being spread, when hate and threats are being spread, where are the social media companies? What's YouTube doing? What's Twitter doing? And of course, then you have the reaction to that. Oh, this is big tech silencing people. It always becomes a debate about free speech, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. You know, last week, Twitter suspended lives of TikTok, um, specifically for the policy against the promotion of threats, uh, violence, and harassment. So great job, right? Um, but it's been seven days, and lives of TikTok is back now, and they're tweeting right this very minute, this is violence, this is harassment. It's clear what these accounts are doing. It's so funny. Back to the point at the open. When the revolution comes, there won't be tanks and soldiers. There won't be stormtroopers and old uniforms and symbols. It'll be some unmarried 30-year-old woman talking in a sing-songy voice, inflection at the end, right? Right? With her special glasses or complex glasses that don't actually improve her vision. She'll have all kinds of pointless humanities degrees, and she'll be on cable news saying, right, it's violence. And what she's really saying is, shut up and obey or we'll hurt you. She's delivering the same message that any stormtrooper delivers, but she's doing it in a sing-songy way. This disinformation, call it literal, but this is the opposite of disinformation. It's not disinformation. This is literally what they're saying. Boston Children's Hospital, as we just showed you on tape, is telling you what they're doing. They perform double mastectomies on minors for no medical reason whatsoever. That's insane. It ought to be a crime in a civilized country. It would be. And they know that because when they were caught, they tried to erase the evidence. And they're not alone. UCSF. UW Health in Wisconsin, Golisano Children's Hospital in New York, Vanderbilt Health, Children's Minnesota, all of these hospitals have deleted the evidence of their gender-affirming procedures, their grotesque mutilation of children after they were publicized. Their own words were publicized online. No one's twisting it. People are just putting up their words. And not all the videos have been deleted. Planned Parenthood is big into this now because it's lucrative. So here's Planned Parenthood in 2021 telling children that so-called puberty blockers are harmless Right. That's a lie. And by the way, there's no such thing as a puberty blocker. These drugs are hormone argonists and they're FDA approved for things like cancer treatment. You get prostate cancer and they lower your testosterone, for example, to prevent the cancer from growing quickly. They are not approved for so-called puberty blocking. They're unapproved and the long term effects are not known, but it's pretty obvious they're grim. But Planned Parenthood won't tell you that. Here's their video. If you're transgender or non-binary, you may find that your puberty experiences don't line up with your gender identity or how you see yourself. That feeling can be uncomfortable, scary, and stressful. If that sounds like you, know that you're not alone. There are medicines you can take to delay puberty for a while. They're called puberty blockers, and they work like a stop sign by halting the hormones testosterone and estrogen that cause puberty changes like facial hair growth and periods. Puberty blockers are safe and can give you more time to figure out what feels right for you, your body, and your gender identity. Everything about that is dark and horrifying, and there should be an uprising against that. That's aimed at your children, not at adults who can make rational decisions, but children, people too young to drive or drink alcohol or smoke cigarettes or serve in the military or vote. People who are not, we have agreed as a group, capable of making rational adult decisions. And that's aimed at them. It's propaganda aimed at them, and it's a lie. Puberty blockers are safe. They are absolutely not safe. You can't delay puberty without damaging severely the bodies of young children. The FDA just identified several, quote, clinically serious cases of side effects after these drugs were recklessly administered to children by lunatic ideologues. The FDA found a, quote, plausible association between the use of puberty blockers and something called intracranial hypertension. Ooh, you want that for your 13-year-old? According to the Mayo Clinic, that condition can cause brain swelling, double vision, severe headaches, permanent vision loss. In other words, brain damage. Brain damage. Oh, great. Okay. On top of that, the European Journal of Endocrinology, among many other publications, has found that so-called purity blockers often cause, quote, decreased bone density, which is associated with a high risk of osteoporosis. And there are other permanent side effects as well. We don't even know the scope of them because this has never been tested longitudinally, ever. But the effects are very obvious, and if you poke around on the internet for about four minutes, you will see them. One teenage girl just uploaded a video showing the effects of five years of puberty blockers on her. Watch this. 
when I talk about being too far gone, not, I don't really know what else to call it. Um, this is what I mean. This is how deep my voice is. Um, <clears throat> it's gotten deeper over time and it's settled. Um, this is what I mean by hair loss. Um, and it just keeps getting worse. It keeps thinning. It keeps receding backwards. Um, you know, and I'm not exactly sure that's coming back. Um, those are the main things when I talk about being androgenized um, to a point of no return. This is what happens when you give a woman testosterone. This is for five years. This is what happens. Yeah, that's what happens. That and a lot of other things. That's what they're telling you is gender affirming? No, it's mutilation. It's grotesque. It's destroying people's lives, children's lives. We made a documentary on this for Tucker Carlson Originals. So we spoke to a lot of people who had endured similar torture. The testosterone kind of had this effect on me where with every step that I took, it would feel good for a short amount of time. But then eventually it's like those same feelings come back up. There's a, the, the initial euphoria that you go through. I changed my gender and everything's going to be wonderful. It was euphoric. I, I, I was like, the feeling I had when I started living as a man was I, I was free. I was finally who I should have been all along. But that euphoria was short-lived. My mental health just got worse. My ability to socialize just got worse. I felt so disconnected from myself. I started using like drugs and alcohol as a crutch and I was just a total disaster. And the, the effects of the testosterone on my mental health um, specifically just made everything 10 million times worse. I had bought into the lie and it almost took my life it's just awful and every person who's participating in this in their moments of clarity knows that 10 years from now there will be thousands of vocal victims of this moment of true craziness and hysteria that has gripped our country people's lives are being destroyed right before us most adults are too cowardly to say a word about it and the Democratic Party is actively doing all it can to promote this, to protect hospitals that are mutilating and destroying the lives of children. In the state of California, always a bellwether, a legislator called Scott Weiner has just sponsored legislation to make California a so-called sanctuary state for kids who want to mutilate their own bodies, to castrate themselves. Scott Weiner, really? Is he a good father? Would you trust this guy within 500 yards of a child? Probably not. Gavin Newsom just signed the bill, of course. So what's the point here? It's certainly not to protect children. It's not protecting them. Any parent will tell you if you want to protect children, you tell them to take a deep breath and reach adulthood and then make rational decisions about how to live their lives. You would definitely not let them make a decision, an irreversible decision like this for themselves. You're their parent. That's the whole point. But the Democratic Party doesn't like parents. The Democratic Party is replacing parents with itself. We're in charge now. It's the most recognizable possible move for any totalitarian movement. Break up the family, replace parents with politicians. The state is in charge. The party is in charge. Romans 1, 18 through 25. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Because what may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made, even as eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify Him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man, and birds, and four-footed animals, and creeping things. Therefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness, in the lust of their hearts, to dishonor their bodies among themselves, who exchanged the truth of God for the lie, and worshipped and served the creature rather than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. Romans chapter 1 tells us God has revealed to mankind that He is the Creator of all things, and that He has made it known to mankind that they are without excuse through His creation that He exists. God demands that we worship Him and recognize Him as the Creator. And when a society does not glorify Him as God, He gives them up to three phases of judgment. Romans 1 verse 24 says, Therefore God also gave them up to uncleanness and the lust of their hearts. The first phase of judgment is an impure heart. The second phase of judgment is of the body, verses 26 and 27. For this reason God gave them up to vile passions, for even their women exchanged the natural use for what is against nature. Likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, 
burned in their lust for one another, men with men committing what is shameful, and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error which was due. The third phase of judgment is in verse 28. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind to do those things which are not fitting. First, the heart is rotten, then the body follows, and then the mind goes. The moral law of God written on the heart has literally been stomped out and replaced with cultural immorality. Immorality now goes in every direction. The mind is corrupt. People don't think right. They advocate all the wretched things and depreciate all the virtuous things. And what flows out of this pornographic, homosexual, depraved culture? All evil. Verses 29 through 32. Being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil mindedness. They are whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful, who knowing the righteous judgment of God, that those who practice such things are deserving of death, not only do the same, but also approve of those who practice them. And it's happening all over the country. Ian Pryor has been on this for a long time, more than a year. He's the executive director of Fight for Our Schools in Virginia, and we're happy to have him join us tonight. Ian, thanks so much for coming on. You wonder if parents in your state are aware of just how, this hasn't gone away, just the opposite. We've seen all these videos of angry parents at school board meetings, but they've gotten even more aggressive in pushing it, or am I imagining that? No, that's absolutely right. And, and this bill that, that is being pushed in Virginia by Elizabeth Guzman, I mean, it's evil, but it's predictable. I mean, this is where it goes. We've been dealing in Virginia, especially Northern Virginia, with schools that say, well, look, if, if Judy comes to the school counselor and says, I wanna be John now, we don't have to tell the parent unless the student gives us permission. And the reason why they don't tell the parent is because the parent might not affirm that. And the schools consider that an unsafe environment abusive. That's why the parents don't get to know. This is the natural progression, a law that says, yes, we agree, it's abusive, and since it's abusive, now we're going to send CPS after you. We're going to prosecute you for felonies and misdemeanors. We're going to destroy your lives and destroy your employment, and we're going to take your kids from you. What Elizabeth Guzman did was entirely predictable. And all the Democrats, like Ab Abigail Spanberger and Jennifer Wexton, that's, that they are going to try and distance themselves from this, you can't. You've already gone out there and said, you support schools keeping this information from parents. You are completely okay with this agenda and you're not going to be able to outrun it. Teachers and school administrators and Elizabeth Guzman from Peru, they're not your kids' parents. You're your kids' parents. Where do they get the right to make these kinds of decisions for your children? Well, they don't have the right. I mean, they do not have the right. The Constitution gives parents the rights to the care, custody, and control of their children. So if they tried this, they would be roundly defeated in court. But look, the fact of the matter is, for people like Elizabeth Guzman and her allies, if you know you go and, and you're, you're reading your kids' books about transgenderism at five, you're getting them on puberty blockers, you're then giving them testosterone and getting a double mastectomy, you're a great parent. Otherwise, if you don't believe that, they're going to prosecute you, put you in jail, and you're not going to see your kids because they're going to take them. Psalm 1, 1 through 6, tells us the way of the righteous in the end of the ungodly. Psalm 1, 1 through 6. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates His own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. 
admit that you're a sinner. B, believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C, call upon the name of the Lord and you will be saved. When a person comes to know Jesus as their savior, they are brought into a relationship with God that guarantees their salvation as eternally secure. To be clear, salvation is more than saying a prayer or making a decision for Christ. Salvation is a sovereign act of God whereby an unregenerate sinner is washed, renewed, and born again by the Holy Spirit, as we read in John 3.3 and Titus 3.5. Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us, through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. When salvation occurs, God gives the forgiven sinner a new heart and puts a new spirit within him, as we read in Ezekiel 36, 26. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. The spirit will cause the saved person to walk in obedience to God's word, as we read in Ezekiel 36, 27 and James 2, 26. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes, and you will keep my judgments and do them. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. So what about repentance? Repentance is not a work we do to earn salvation. No one can repent and come to God unless God draws that person to himself. As we read in John 6:44, No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up at the last day. Repentance is something God gives. It is only possible because of his grace. All of salvation, including repentance and faith, is a result of God drawing us, opening our eyes, and changing our hearts. God's long-suffering leads us to repentance, and so does his kindness, as we read in 2 Peter 3.9 and Romans 2.4. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Or do you despise the riches of his goodness, forbearance, and long-suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 declares, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Works are not the cause of salvation. Works are the evidence of salvation. Faith in Christ always results in good works. The person who claims to be a Christian, but lives in willful disobedience to Christ, has a false or dead faith and is not saved. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. That is why John the Baptist called people to produce fruit in keeping with repentance, as we read in Matthew 3.8. Therefore, bear fruits worthy of repentance. A person who has truly repented of his sin and exercised faith in Christ will give evidence of a changed life as we read in 2 Corinthians 5.17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. A person who has not repented of their sin and exercised faith in Christ will give evidence of the works of the flesh, as we read in Galatians 5.19-21. through Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. A person who has crucified the flesh and belongs to Christ will give evidence of the Spirit, as we read in Galatians 5.22-24. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And those who are Christ's have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Believers are born again, regenerated when they believe. For a Christian to lose his salvation, he would have to be unregenerated. The Bible gives no evidence that the new birth can be taken away. The Holy Spirit indwells all believers, as we read in John 14, 17. The Spirit of Truth, 
whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him or knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. The Holy Spirit baptizes all believers into the body of Christ, as we read in 1 Corinthians 12, 13. For by one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and have all been made to drink into one Spirit. For a believer to become unsaved, he would have to be unindwelt and detached from the body of Christ. John 3.15 states that whoever believes in Jesus Christ will have eternal life. If you believe in Christ today and have eternal life, but lose it tomorrow, then it was never eternal at all. Hence, if you lose your salvation, the promises of eternal life in the Bible would be in error. Scripture says, For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Remember, the same God who saved you is the same God who will keep you. Once we are saved, we are always saved. Praise God, our salvation is most definitely, eternally secure. Time is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready!